Hello, Atlas Shrug 383 here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, my channel is Odds and Ends, and one of my interests is kind of automotive repair, car maintenance. So today I'm going to share a video upload of uh, an oil change on my 2015 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. Uh, the Challenger has the, the 392, the 6.4 liter V8 Hemi. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a toy of mine. I don't drive this every day. Um, but uh, I'm going to do the maintenance today and I want to share some tips that I use and uh, should be easy peasy. I enjoy doing my own oil changes and so would you. Uh, try it out sometime. Really, if you have the time, the biggest issue is the time. Anybody can do an oil change on most any car. It's a piece of cake and once you do it a couple of times, then you, uh, it's, it's, it's not a thing. No problem. So, uh, let's dive in and uh, get started. I'm going to show you really quick before I get started here. Uh, my oil change kit I ordered from eBay Motors. Um, got a good deal on it. It's about $59. Um, basically, you get a Mopar uh, oil filter and seven quarts of this uh, Pins Oil Zero uh, W40 um, Ultra Synthetic. Um, oil, which is what uh, Mopar likes for you to use. Um, it's good stuff, but good price too. eBay Motors, man, they're pretty awesome. And just for safety, whenever you jack up a car, make sure that you have your uh, transmission in gear. Don't have it in neutral. And chalk a wheel, just in case. You don't want this thing to roll on you. And I, I'm going to chalk this wheel over here. I'm going to I'm gonna put the chocks in and give them a couple of kicks just to make sure it is in gear. Yeah. To start with, uh, we're just gonna get ready. I'm gonna show you how I jack up uh, my scat pack. If you have a car with a really low ground clearance in the front like these do, I mean, they're they're low anyway, but you've got the splitter guard on the front. You can't use ramps, conventional ramps. They're a little bit too steep. So you would drag and it's not gonna work. You'll push them out of the way. Um, I'm gonna use jacks and jack stands to jack mine up. Um, if you do have ramps, if you don't have you know, jacks or jack stands or what have you, you can use uh, wood. You can use uh, basically two by fours and kind of make a progressive slope up to your jack stand. I've seen people do that. I've never done it myself, but it it will work that way. But just regular ramps, that the kind you buy, you know, you can pull up on for maintenance. Um, it's just too low in the front. And at the end, we're going to reset our oil life indicator. I don't drive this car a lot of miles. We're nowhere near the mileage requirement. Um, I'm only, I just saw the mileage flash up there, 47,000 or so miles. I've only driven this about about 1,500 miles since my last oil change, but that was almost a year ago. And it's important to keep fresh oil in the car long-term, you know, just to, because oil goes bad. It collects moisture. It doesn't lubricate as well. You need to change at least once a year, even if you barely drive it. So I want to get the hood latch down here. And there she is. That is the uh, the 392, the 6.4 liter Hemi that the Scat Packs and SRT 392s come with. Um, really enjoy this engine. Uh, it's about 485 horsepower. And uh, you'll see here, I do have an oil catch can. One thing that I do not do, just a quick heads up. You'll Before I forget, just a quick heads up. Um, when people drain the oil, one of the first things they often do is pop their oil filler cap, you know, or remove it and uh, pop the dipstick for the oil here. And they do that so that when you open the drain plug on the bottom of the engine, the suction will help the oil come out. It'll help pull that oil out uh, quickly and efficiently. And it's true, it will do that. However, as you'll see, when we drain the oil from the 6.4 liter, 
it's it comes out with explosive force. I mean, it's like uh, it comes out faster than black gold from Jed Clampett's bullet hole in the ground. It's just a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of force of, of that oil coming out. So I don't pop them in the beginning. I, I, I let that slow down the force of the oil just a little bit, and then I pop them after I get it started. So I'm going to leave all of this. I'm going to leave all this buttoned up for now. Because I'm going to use jacks and jack stands, I just wanted to show these. Um, these are pinch weld brackets that fit over the pinch welds where we jack up the car. These are by ZL1 add-ons. There's their website. Uh, these are nice. They've got magnets in them. Little magnets down there. And what you do is uh, these keep your pinch welds from getting destroyed, basically, which can happen if they get bent a little bit. See there? If they get if they start to get worn, and you can see this one is a little bit worn, um, they can start to bend and uh, warp. But these will protect them. These will protect them when we put the jack under there. So the magnet, oh, the magnets uh, will hold them in place, and these flyers will help you remember not to leave them there. So one of the things you'll see me do is I'm actually using two floor jacks. Uh, I have those pinch wheel protectors on both sides of the car, and I'm gonna jack them up, jack it up progressively from either side. I just like to do that because I've gotta get enough clearance in the front to get under the car. And having two jacks helps me keep my frame from twisting excessively. Your vehicle's frame is designed to twist. It's okay for it to twist a little bit. But I like to progressively jack up the front of my car using two jacks together. So that's what I'm doing right now. jack up a little bit more on the other side and we should be able to get our jack stands under there i just want to show you what this looks like with the car jacked up you'll see the wheels are about equal distance off the ground i may go just a tad higher on this side but i want to show you where to put the jack stands right uh, right there you see that uh kind of upside down triangle shape that's the best place to put your jack stands. Ta -da. I'm going to lower this one down. I have the other side resting on the jack stand, uh, so I'm going to gently lower this one down now until it makes contact with the uh, with the jack stand. I always keep some extra cardboard around. This is my oh crap protection. I'm pretty good at not making a mess these days, but just in case, I have been known to make a mess when I change oil. I'm just gonna throw this under there. The next step is we've got to remove uh, the plastic service panel on the bottom of the Challenger. Uh, a lot of modern cars uh, have plastic on the bottom. Uh, that's for aerodynamics. Uh, to keep air from going up in the engine compartment, it, it would create drag. Uh, it's not a big deal. There are four uh, bolts, four sc little screws that hold these on, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. These are the bolts I was telling you about. These are 10 millimeters. There's one here, one here, one here in the back, and another one over there. So I'm gonna pop those out really quick with both hands. Uh, so I've just got a, a box, uh, box wrench on a wrench.
All right, we got the service panel down. All right, guys, the next step is uh, we've got everything ready now. The service panel's off. Uh, we're just ready to drain oil. You know, it's not rocket science. Make sure that you have a drain pan that will fit the capacity of the car that you're changing oil on. You know, this is a seven quart uh, Hemi engine. This is a 15 quart jug and it's empty. So be sure that you pop your breather hole or else it's just gonna flood out because otherwise air will be trapped in the container and it'll just cause the oil to come gushing, gushing out. It'll make a huge mess. So, and right here, this is your oil pan drain on this uh, 392 um, oil filter. It's right here, oh, right here, the black thing. We'll take that off uh, after we drain the pan. Both will make a mess. To pop your drain plug off your oil pan on this uh, 392, you will need a 13 millimeter. 13 millimeter uh, socket. So we're almost done draining the oil pan. Now what we're doing is working on removing that oil filter. And uh, I, I used one of these tools just to break it loose because last time I had oil changed was at a service station and they usually over tighten them. So I cheated, I'm sorry, I used this tool just to go ahead and break the oil filter loose and now I'm gonna unscrew it by hand. where the oil filter spins on, there was a lot of debris this time. I believe gasket material from the old oil filter all around here where it seals. So I've actually been cleaning that off. I cleaned all that old material off. I don't want that to be in the way of my new oil filter when I put it on. All right, guys, we've still got a few little drips coming out, but it's no biggie. I'm gonna go ahead and put the drain plug back in. Do not forget this, <laughs> while your car is up, when you drain the oil and remove the filter and let all of this go, don't, don't get in a hurry and forget this or you're gonna be in for a, a rude awakening. We're gonna tighten this drain plug back down I don't have a torque wrench or the torque spec on it, but when it's tight, it's tight, okay? Somebody's gonna probably fuss at me for saying that, but it's true. Let's see. Come on. Ah. Oh. All right. All right, that's, that's good. That's good. I don't think we'll have any problem. And our next step is we're going to get our oil filter, our new oil filter, ready to uh, spin on. Um, I like to use the Mopar Genuine Filters. But what I'm going to do is use a little oil and season this gasket. See this rubber gasket? Uh, it's always, always a good idea to kind of season that a little bit. That's probably not the right, that's probably a silly word but we just want to use some oil on that gasket. It'll soften it and it'll help prevent leaks. So I'm opening a, a quart of my Pennzoil Synthetic here and I'm just going to whoo, get a little oil on there and put a little oil around the seal. Might need a little bit more actually. Uh, after I put the oil on that seal, I'm gonna prime it. What I mean by priming it is basically the oil filter is empty and I'm gonna put some oil in it so that when the engine pressurizes for that one little instant that it takes, this will fill up very rapidly. Once I put the oil back in the engine and then I turn the engine on and the oil pump 
starts doing its job. This fills very quickly with oil, but for just an instant, there'll be a little bit of a lag, you know, in that. So I'm going to prime the filter. I'm just going to, uh, just going to put a little bit in there. Right about, just enough where I can see it down in there. Yeah. There we go. That should be enough. It should be enough. So let's let's spin this filter on. Almost done, guys. Piece of cake, right? See right up here, this is where we're gonna put the oil filter on. With oil filters especially, hand tightening them, in my opinion, is always the best. But never use a wrench on an oil filter because it makes life easier, you know, when you're doing these oil changes yourself to be able to remove them by hand without struggling on them too much. So, okay. I don't need the glove anymore. All right, I'm gonna tighten it by hand till it gets really stiff and then I'm gonna use both hands. There we go. I'm gonna tighten it this way with both hands. I'm kind of, I'm pushing up, turning it a little bit and compressing that seal. So we won't have any leaks on that. All right, we are good. All right, guys, now it's time to uh, button the engine back up. I'm gonna put my dipstick in there, uh, my oil filler cap. We're gonna put the new oil in in just a minute. I'm gonna check my oil catch can. Now, if you have a stock um, car like this, if you have a, a Challenger or Charger scat pack, they don't come from the factory with this, but you have to empty them from time to time. So I'm gonna use both hands. I'm gonna crack the uh, oil catch can and I'll show you what's inside. And keep in mind, I don't drive this car a ton of miles, so <laughs> there might not be much in there at all. Yeah, there's not a lot, but let's come over here to the light. Just a little bit in there. It's nothing major. It's just a little bit of oil that uh, is cycled back in there. And of course, this oil would have been burnt up, basically. It would have been recycled in there. It would have burned in the combustion chambers. And, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt anything. The car is designed to do that. But... All right, guys, final step is we're gonna put our fresh oil in. So uh, I've already taken off my uh, filler cap and it's a good idea. It's pretty clean. It's a good idea to use a funnel for this. That way you won't make a, a bigger mess. What I'm gonna do is put six quarts in and then on that seventh quart, I'm gonna, before I put that one in, I'm gonna check it.
are about a quart low. I don't know if you can, I uh, don't think we're gonna focus on that. Uh, about a quart low, so that's exactly what would be expected. All right, folks, we're almost done. Next step is I'm gonna put this car in neutral. It's still jacked up, of course. I'm gonna start it and let it run a minute. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I'm just pressurizing the engine. Then I'm gonna check for leaks one more time uh, and then we'll, we'll be done. But we need to remember to reset our oil light whenever we do this. <laughs> combination of mileage plus just sitting and the thing is my car sits a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay I'm gonna hold in okay and just reset my oil life it's at 69 percent okay well <laughs> the engine has to be off lovely all right kind of ridiculous that you can't reset it while the engine's on but whatever all right so there's run there we go we're at 100 percent see there no leaks on the cardboard no fresh leaks your final check should be one more check of your oil level there. One more check. Perfect. Oil change complete. If you made it this far, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you like this video, if it helped you in some way, please like it, uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Uh, every now and again, I put some good stuff out there and uh, have a great and blessed day. Final step on the scat pack. We're just gonna lower it uh, off the jack stands and it's ready to, ready to rumble. Take care. <laughs>